Okay. Um, well, I walk into the house, and the very first thing I see is it's kind of like a, it's a, a tan beige finish across the entire house. Um, and I always notice every single one of the doorways is open, and it's an archway. And there are uh, there are quite a bit of entryways, doorways. Um, if I had to describe it, it's more of like an Italian style house um, with it looks like a stucco finish, like the outside of a stucco building um, with archways all the way for the doors. Um, there's one main entryway that leads me. Uh, well, I mean, there's, there's a foyer right there and it's actually, it, it's really big. Um, it's got quite a few people inside of it, but there's an, there's an older gentleman um, who I've never talked to except for this one statement that he always makes to me, which is, um, you are dangerous because you can come and go as you please. Um, take that for whatever it's worth. Um, and after I turn, give him my attention, and he says that, I, I start to make my way through the house. Um, but it's almost like I'm, I'm, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not acknowledging anybody, but every single one of them knows exactly. It, well, they're, they're all taking notice of me, if that makes sense. And it's a, it's a very crowded house. It's, it's like a, a party, um, if you will. And everyone's talking to each other. No one's talking to me, but everyone's watching me as I go past. Um, and as I'm going through the rooms, I always stay on the outer perimeter. I never walk through the middle of the rooms, through the crowds or anything like that. Um, I, I walk directly from that foyer uh, through an archway. Um, and after I walk through that archway, I go straight into a kitchen dining room type room. Um, I really don't remember any details, appliances, or anything like that. It's almost like this this place is is not really a house. It has a house feel, but it's like an event hall. There's no there's no appliances. There's no nothing inside of it. There's tables, chairs, people talking. There's like an island in the middle of the kitchen uh, with a marble finish on top. I, I, I'm telling you, I remember <laughs> details. Yeah. Um, about this place, uh, and I, I make my way around the party, uh, or gathering, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and as I, it's like an L-shaped room. I go through the, around the kitchen area, which has a sink and that island. Like I said, uh, I turn left and I go through around. I should say the dining area. Um. And I kind of make a lap around the room. Um, so I, I don't just stop at the doorway and go out the doorway. I kind of walk around the entire outer perimeter of the room um, with everyone taking notice of me and me just kind of floating through, I guess you would say. Um, I go out into the back door, and the back door immediately leads out to a, a, a patio with a really nice pergola with ivy uh, all over it. Um, the patio is about standard size. I mean, it's not anything massive or anything like that, nor is the backyard. Um, and I, instead of walking around the patio, I immediately take a right around the, the back of the house. Um, and this is really the only reason I say it's a house is because the yards I mean, once I get out into the yard and I turn back and I look, it, it, it looks like a house. Um, it's got a roof. It's got two stories. Um, it had those really nice, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know what to call them, the ceramic shingles on top of the roof. Um, 
But I, I turn right, and after I turn right, I'm walking again along the perimeter of the backyard. I, I turn right, which the house runs directly into a fence. Um, and as I walk around the perimeter of the fence, there's when I get to the back side of it, there's always something to take notice of outside of the fence. Um, and, and, and it has to do with someone's regret. Um, one of the first times I, I had this dream three times that was actually productive. And then I'll go into other things that details because I've had this dream a total of, of six times so far. Wow. Okay. Um, so uh, the first time it was like a, a parade that was going by for somebody else. And it was like a mom's regret that she couldn't get that for her child. Uh, the second time was a, uh, was me looking over and literally just seeing, uh, packs upon packs of dogs running through a street behind this fence. Um, and someone mentioning someone needs to do something about those dang dogs. Um, and the third time, which was kind of weird because the other two times it had been a, a street there. Um, the third time there was like a Creek behind it and there was just this child who was trying to get through the fence to be able to go to play in the Creek. Um, so I, I make my way over to the left side of the yard. Um, and I walk around the entire perimeter as well, and there's there's kind of like a side yard there, um, and and I take notice of the side yard and kind of notice a conversation happening there, which has changed multiple times. But uh, I end up walking through a gate, um, and this gate leads to slums, um, just like really messed up uh, shanty town. Tin roofs that are all rusted out, buildings that are dilapidated, falling down, and people inside of it that are, uh, quite frankly, just messed up. Um, missing body parts, holes in their bodies. And again, while I'm making my way around these perimeters, I'm not talking to anybody. Um, and this slum area is, is the perimeter of it is no bigger than an alley that you would see on a city street. You know, it's, it's not a big area, but I walk through it. There's various doorways, um, and people taking notice of me. And like I said, they're, they're, they're mangled. They're messed up. Really, really messed up. Um, you know, uh, Limbs kind of mangled, broken in different ways, holes in people. Um, I mean, people missing half their faces, like stuff like that. Um, and again, I, I make my way around the perimeter of that. And after I make my way around the perimeter of that, um, there's just, I, I, nobody's talking to me. I'm not talking to anybody, but again, they're all taking notice of me and acting as if they know that I'm there. Uh, I go back through that fence. Um, and when I go back through the fence at this point, the backyard is now empty. If not, I mean, it's, it's mostly empty, if not completely empty. Um, there's been a couple of times where there's one or two stragglers there. Um, and at this point is when I actually start talking to people. Um, so there's, and, and I, I don't remember exactly the names. I recorded the names and I'd have to go back through uh, my notes and and but it's on my phone which I'm on right now. I think you might have um, typed typed it up in the channel under the share your dream section. 
I, you, you put some I names did, yes. in there? Okay. I'm not sure if the names are specifically meaningful. Maybe they are. Uh, we can come back around to that. But if you don't remember them right now, that's that's okay. And I think you froze up again. Yeah, uh, I mean that's that's exactly yeah, why I recorded them because in that moment I I I remembered exactly who I was talking to, what they needed, um, and the tasks have been either helping someone find a lost item helping someone find a family member inside of the household or or in the yard or just as simple as sitting down and, and, and listening to them talk. Um, the third time I had the dream uh, was was really notable because really the the first two times I uh, well I, I guess I'll, I'll I'll go into I'll go into the to the rest of the dream before I start giving those details. Okay, yeah, we'll try and maybe keep a chronology of the most recent one, and then we can come back around. Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, after that, um, you know, I, I I make my way through the house, um, going room to room, and this time, if there's anyone inside of the room, um, I take notice and, and literally make a beeline for them, and and this is what happens. Um, this time I'm, I'm walking, uh, basically searching rooms for, for whoever needs my help is, is what the feeling was. Right. Um, and like I said, the task can be as simple as listening to them talk. Like they just need to get something off their chest. And so I'll sit there and listen to what they have to say. Um, it could be helping them find items. It could be helping them find a family member that was also inside of the household. Uh, um, at which point I, I go back to the foyer and I make my way through the house again, um, chronologically, just like I did before, you know, going into the kitchen, the dining area, around the perimeter of the backyard, through the slums, um, and then back into the house um and this is a detail that i missed um i'll i'll turn right as i'm as i'm going through the kitchen and there's a set of stairs that goes up and to the right um with gosh i want to say i want to say about 12 rooms along this hallway six on either side uh yeah and in fact that's exact 12 rooms on either side, uh, 12 rooms, six on either side. Um, and I, I just go from the front to, you know, I, I clear each room like I would as if I'm searching a house for something. I go to the left room and the right room and then go to the second set of rooms, left, right, third, left, right, so on and so forth. Um, and like I said, at this point, I, uh, I, I make my way back downstairs um, and I turn right back into the foyer and I kind of walk around the perimeter again. It's as if I'm doing a, a final sweep that, uh, but there's no one there this time, each and every single time there's just been no one there. Um, after I make my way through the, through the kitchen, uh, dining room, backyard, slums, back into the backyard, uh, dining room, kitchen, upstairs again, and each room, uh, I'll walk back over to the foyer, and the old man is the only one that's still there, and he looks at me in the eyes, and he says, you are very dangerous because you can come as you please. Um, at this point, my attention is drawn to a like a, a biometric scanner that I stick my face next up to and the doors open and I walk out and that's the end of the dream.